All right. So in this little video, I'm just going to show you the uh, where the rules are for the great circle sailings in Bowditch. Um, and then I'm going to have to tell you, uh, and then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what rule goes with what. And then there's another rule that you're just going to have to memorize. So anyway, these are the rules for great circle sailing. Okay. So first of all, on page 612 of Bowditch, you're going to find uh, formula 36. That's the cosine D formula. You're going to use this to calculate the great circle distance. And formula 37, the tan C formula. And this is the formula that you're going to use to calculate the initial course. Okay. So it's formula 36 and formula 37. They're on page 612. And then the instructions are written just after it. So let me just zoom in on this section here. Okay. So I'm going to change the slide. Well, I thought I was. Okay, here we go. Okay, great. So here we are. Okay, I just blew that up. This is formula 36 for cosine D. Okay, and this is formula 37. Okay, now the, there's two rules written directly below formula 37 at the bottom of page 612. The first one is the sign convention used in the calculations of the great circle distance and course angle by equations 36 and 37. So this rule applies to both 36 and 37 is that the latitude of the destination is treated as a negative quantity when latitudes of departure and destination are the contrary name. What does that mean? That means we change, we cross the equator. So whenever you cross the equator, okay, this rule applies. If you don't cross the equator, this rule does not apply. It only applies if you cross the equator. So when you're looking at your latitude and longitude that you're given, if you see that one's north and one's south, you got to treat the, next, the second one as south. Now, yeah, all right, so that's what I refer to as rule one. Okay, it doesn't say rule one in the book, but it's the first rule after the formulas, okay? Now, the rule is basically, is L2 going to be negative when I do my trig? And the answer is, if, it's, if I start in north, I end south, then yes, L2 will be negative. If I start in south and I go north, then yes, L2 will be negative. If I start north and I stay north, L2 will not be negative. If I start south and I stay south, L2 will not be negative, okay? So it applies to both 36 and 37. And the thing is, you have to apply this rule before you start using your calculator, okay? You've got to say, every time that uh, uh, latitude 2 shows up, okay, every time that latitude 2 shows up, you've got to make that a negative. So it's going to be a cosine of a negative, okay? Here it would be cos a tangent of a negative, okay? Very important. Now, there's another rule just underneath it. If the course angle, okay, course angle, course angle is C. Ah, C, okay. Well, this rule only applies to 37 because there's no C term in formula 36, okay. So this second rule only applies to this. The first rule applied to cosine D and tan C. But this second rule and also the third rule are only going to apply to the tan C. Okay, so if the course angle is calculated, okay, boom, calculated, that means I use my calculator. This formula is going to apply after I use my calculator. This is a very important distinction. The first rule, it's both formulas before the calculator. This rule, let me actually bring my, my uh, pointer, let me bring my laser pointer. Okay, so formula 36, formula 37, rule one is for both of them before you use your calculator. But this rule two, as I'm calling it, okay, um, if your C, okay, the, the, when you calculate this, so C equals, if you get a negative number, then this rule applies. If, the, if, if when you do this, C is positive, this rule does not apply. How does this rule work? It's only for 37. If the course angle is calculated, so after I do this formula, I get a negative number, it is necessary to add 180. Okay, so I add 180 to that, and uh, I'll have a positive number. Okay, great. That's rule two. Okay, and you apply it after the trig and only to formula 37. Now, there's one more rule. And the rule is not written on Bowditch, okay? But, you know, you should just remember that, hey, this is C, not CN. We still have to convert C to CN. Course angle, the internal angle in our, our navigation triangle, to CN, the course from north. The freaking N in CN stands for from north. It's the course to steer. So, anyway, here we are. So, this is basically it. The third rule is to convert C to CN. And the way we do that is that CN, we have to use these prefixes and suffixes. So here's your C, and there's the north-south prefix and the east-west suffix, okay? So now, here's the thing. Great circle sailing 
the rules are slightly different for this, okay? In rum line sailings, if you went north, the prefix was north. And if you went south, the prefix was south. That's going to be different now, okay? So, the, 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 in, in rum line sailings, that was parallel, mid-lat, uh, mercator, okay? Uh, not, uh, 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 plain, mid, okay, those guys. If we went east, it was east. If we went west, it was west. If our longitude was, a uh, change in longitude was east, east. West, west. That's going to be the same. The one that's going to be different, though, is the prefix, okay? So, here's the story, okay? Four great circle sailing, when you convert C to CN, the prefix is not going to be whether I went north or south. The prefix is going to be whatever was the name of L1. What the hell does that mean? Well, what that means is that if I was in the northern hemisphere, I start, if I started in the northern hemisphere, the name of L1 would be north. And then I would circle, I would use north. And uh, if... Um, uh, I started in the southern hemisphere, then it would be south, okay? And so those are the rules that you're going to have to apply, all right? And I hope that video was helpful to you.